What a glorious morning, Raiders. We've just got some juicy news. Or I don't know if they're going to be good news. They're going to be bad news. I guess we're going to find out. Only time will tell. Flarium, as a company, guys, is being sold to an actual gaming company. Now, what we know so far is that uh, they are pretty expensive, right? They sold for a pretty big price. We're going to dive into all of the articles and uh, we're going to discuss uh, a few different scenarios here and there. At the moment, a Plarium is being owned by aristocrats, some degenerate gamblers from Australia that basically, uh, yeah, they don't really care about anything else but just gamble, make more money. They run one of the biggest casino companies in the world. They're manufacturing casino slots uh, and all of that stuff, right? And uh, they do owe Plarium and they have a couple of different ones as well, if I'm not mistaken. Now, a few months ago, an article came out uh, where they were mentioning that they are looking to maybe sell Plarium. Now, they haven't confirmed that we're going to sell it 100%, but they were exploring options, guys. And uh, it seems like they've got a buyer, okay? So let's dive straight into the, straight into the important thing. MTG is purchasing Plarium, guys. Now, MTG is a modern times group, basically a Swedish company, if I'm not mistaken. And they owe a lot of different mobile games, okay? Uh, I feel like uh, owning Plarium is not necessarily a good thing uh, just because a mobile gaming company purchases another mobile gaming company. Uh, there are a lot of different things in here that are pretty interesting. Uh, I don't personally expect the game to get better just because of it. Uh, I feel like they will have to uh, recover a lot of money because the price of purchasing Plarium is pretty damn expensive. So let me just quickly walk you through it, guys. Now we're going to see what other games MTG actually uh, has on the market and basically what's their whole, uh, their whole reasoning behind the purchase. Because I really think it's not just trade, okay? It's not... Like Raid is at its peak right now. It's going to make billions of uh, billions of dollars over the next few years because it's a brand new game that's absolutely crushing the market. Uh, everything has a cycle, a, a lifespan, right? So uh, the gacha games have been very popular for the last few years. They will most likely continue to be popular for another few years. But I really don't think that this uh, genre is at its peak. I don't think it will ever reach a new peak, to be honest, because... That's all a trend, right? People get bored of something after a few years and they're moving on to the next thing. And then the next thing is just the, the life cycle, basically. And I really think that the gacha games already had their peak. And now, basically, whoever brings in gacha games, they will never really see that massive peak that Raid and other games got during COVID, right? Because that was one of the main things that really, really boosted uh, these games to the sky. So... MTG acquires Plarium, developer of global number one mobile RPG Raid Shadow Legends and strengthens mobile gaming position. A modern times group MTG has today signed an agreement with Aristocrat Leisure Limited to acquire 100% of Plarium Global LTD. Now, one thing to keep in mind, Plarium is a company uh, that was created in Israel. The main offices are still in Israel, if I'm not mistaken. The team that works for Raid Shadow Legends is based in Ukraine. Most likely now is based in Poland. Which means that most likely the people that are taking all of the decisions for Raid Shadow Legends as a game are the people that are working on the game. It's not like Plarium has only one team working on all of their games. They have multiple teams working on all of their different games, right? So this might change. Uh, it really depends if MTG is really going to go hard on uh, changing personnel like staff, you know, if they're going to bring in different people to deal with other stuff. But to be honest, from what I understood from this article, MTG is kind of like aiming at something else. They're looking to gain value from different things rather than just get in raid as a cash cow, you know? So... The international studio behind the popular squad battle RPG Raid Shadow Legends, a highly successful evergreen cross-platform IP. The acquisition provides scale with multiple avenues to deliver synergies and adds a highly creative studio with a history of commercial success with strong momentum in 2024 to MTG's portfolio. This is very important, guys, because it's all about this part right here history of commercial success. I really think that MTG 
is more after this rather than just trade. It's more after all of their strategies, all of the dirty secrets that Perium has. And I'm talking about basically tons of different studies done, okay? So a gambling company, guys, uh, will 100% do all sorts of different testing in terms of uh, how is the human mind working? What triggers them to gamble? How are we keeping them to gamble, etc.? So it's all about uh, all of their dirty secrets. That's what I think anyway. It will, of course, substantially improve MTG's already strong cash flow generation. Rate generates a lot of money and a few other games from uh, Plarium, right? Uh, the price was set at $620 million, guys. Now, they do have their own deals, which means that for the next few years, Aristocrat will win around another $200 million based on uh, Plarium's performance. How well are all of their games going to, uh, to do, basically? So, it's pretty interesting. They initially purchased uh, Raid Shadow Legends for $500 million. Now, since then, they've made tons of money, okay? They registered, uh, I think, uh, $1 billion or something like that in, uh, in a ca uh, not cash flow, not profit, just uh, revenue overall. So, of course, they had to pay all of their stuff from there. But either way, they made lo uh, lots of money. They are selling the company for way more than they bought it for, which means that this was a great investment for uh, Aristocrat. Now, they do have a one or two different uh, other gaming companies that most likely will be up for uh, for sales, right? But if we are paying attention to a couple of different things, right here, you see 820 million. So basically 620 million uh, cash in hand or whatever they're planning to do. And then uh, approximately $200 million over, uh, over uh, the, next, uh, the next few years. Either way, Plarium is being sold, guys. Now, what do we actually know about MTG? Okay, MTG makes quite a few different games. Uh, they have quite a few different gaming studios like uh, Inno Games, Hatch, uh, Ninja Kiwi, Play Simple, Snowprint, uh, VC Fund. Uh, the games that they are actually making, they're not really similar with Raid. Uh, to be honest, yes, they are all of all mobile games. That's the main uh, the main thing. Most of them are like they have Forza. They have a lot of good. Uh, good titles, but they're very, very different from uh, Raid Shadow Legends, right? They have similar games with uh, uh, Clash of Clans or something similar with that, right? There are tons of, uh, tons of uh, animated funny games right here, which I guess they do, uh, they do appeal to a wider, uh, a wider population rather than a uh, Raid. They have some pretty weird games like Crossword Explorer, etc., but I'm pretty sure those ones are making some big bucks as well. Uh, Snowprint right here. Okay, this looks a bit more like kind of like on the raid, uh, on the raid team. Tacticus. Uh, we have Legends uh, of uh, Soulguard, uh, uh, Rivenguard. Never heard of any of these games to be honest. Uh, the main idea is they are already making a lot of money with these games. So basically, what they are kind of like looking to uh, get out of the whole thing is Plarium. Uh, Plarium's experience on how to actually uh, push the marketing, okay? The, their marketing strategies. So I feel like that's that's basically the big win for uh, MTG here. And it, that's not Raid Shadow Legends, of course. That's part of it because it is a successful game. It's uh, one of the most successful uh, games in this genre. Uh, if we're living on the side, of course, uh, Genshin Impact, uh, uh, Honkai Star Rail, and uh, I'm not sure how many other games are actually uh, doing much, much better than Raid from uh, the gacha space. Of course, they are very different from Raid, but you guys kind of like know the know the drill. So basically, MTG will benefit from Plarium stack and deep expertise in live ops. Now, if you're wondering what live ops is, guys, it's basically live operations, treating the game as a live operation, which means live events constantly updating the game and keeping uh, keeping the game going. Uh, when you're purchasing a AAA game, that's not a live operation. You've purchased the game, the developers moved on to the next title, and they might release one patch, two patch to fix bugs. Maybe they're going to try to sell you some expansions nowadays because that's the, the gaming world, but that's not a live operation, okay? So, Plarium is doing an amazing job as being a live operator. Uh, Raid has tons of events. 
uh, tons of marketing, tons of campaigns uh, with in uh, real life in-game characters and all of these things that they are doing. Uh, I feel like Plarium really has uh, some very nasty strategy behind their marketing team, uh, the way they target their player base. And it's all about mind games. It's all about understanding uh, the people's mind, right? So I feel like uh, they they are going to win big time just from this uh, from this department, you know. And it's all about marketing, monetization to drive com uh, commercial synergies and further improve the group's performance over the long term. So it's pretty simple, right? Uh, I feel like yeah, Plarium has what five, ten games, whatever they're buying that. But MTG already has uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 different games that can benefit from all of the knowledge that Plarium has. Uh, I'm talking about marketing, uh, the way they are doing their uh, uh, live operations, etc. So uh, this will be a massive boost for uh, MTG. And of course, they will have to recoup their investment uh, as fast as possible, I would assume too. I don't necessarily expect that raid will become better. Uh, I think it will be heavily monetized, even maybe even more than before. Maybe they're going to make better offers to basically try and uh, get more people to spend. That's another thing. Uh, at the moment, Raid Shadow Legends is one of the most exp uh, expensive games on the market. And I'm talking about all of the other games put together from all of the other genres. The prices in Raid Shadow Legends are just mind-blowing, okay? The power creep is insane. Uh, if you want to keep up, you got to spend tens of thousands, okay? And I'm talking about thousands, uh, thousands every single month. It might change uh, for better. But honestly, I'm not really sure if uh, that's the case, to be honest with you guys. So there's quite a few, quite a few different things here. I do think it's pretty interesting. Uh, the whole thing is basically uh, meant to finalize uh, next year, either first quarter or the second quarter. So in the meantime... Aristocrat still uh, owes Plarium. I'm not sure uh, exactly what deals they have right there in the background uh, to basically still earn some money from, um, uh, from uh, Plarium even after the transaction is complete. Uh, but basically, I'm positive that uh, they will try to just monetize the game more and make more money to increase their cash flow. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it is. It is pretty interesting, to be honest. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, <laughs> how good it's going to be for Raid, guys. Like, changes changes might be good, changes might be bad. All I can tell you is that, uh, uh, yeah, Plarium is as it is. Uh, Aristocrat most likely uh, were the ones that taught Plarium a lot of things about psychology, the human psychology uh, behind uh, what drives them to spend, to gamble, because that's what they're doing, right? That's uh, that's their main niche. Uh, I feel like Plarium learned a lot of things from Aristocrat. They've implemented them into Raid and uh, their other games. Of course, uh, this gaming industry constantly evolves and is just getting uh, nastier and nastier. I feel like every year. Um, it might be good for MTG to implement the same things uh, in their other games. Or they might be trying to change it a little bit and uh, focus more on... a uh, making money with the current games that they have from Plarium and in the long term to benefit from uh, their marketing and their other, uh, their other things. But I really don't, don't see massive improvements just because of, uh, of these guys, to be honest. Like, as I mentioned, Plarium learned their dirty tricks. Uh, they are doing their things uh, to keep their games going, to improve their, uh, uh, their income. Just, just because a different company is going to owe you, I don't really think it's going to mean a much, at least in a positive way, right? Nobody comes to buy a company just to make it better. They want to make profit, right? Uh, unless you're Elon Musk and you're buying Twitter or who knows, even that might be some, uh, some dodgy thing right there. But <laughs> either way, uh, that's pretty much all for today's video, guys. Plarium is being sold, 620 million plus 200 more, lots and lots of money. Uh, yeah, I guess we're going to have to wait and see what's the whole deal for the next one or two years. It will take time to basically see. Uh, I'm not sure what's the lifespan for Raid. At the moment, it's still doing really strong, to be honest. I'm not expecting the game to end 
uh, tomorrow or in the next one year or so. Uh, I'm not sure if they're uh, heavily going to invest again on marketing to basically acquire new players, player acquisition, or they will still focus on player retention. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, as usual, appreciate all of you guys watching. Much love, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.